Hi friends, this is Caitlin and I want to welcome you to the Kendra's Card Challenge 7 video hop and giveaway. Crafters participating in the hop today will be sharing a project that was created using each of the 15 card sketches from the new quarterly card making challenge. I will be sharing sketch number 11 with you today and there's going to be a big giveaway prize for this video hop so make sure you comment and subscribe at each stop along the way for the hop. At the top of the description box, you'll find a link to the next person in the lineup, and I hope you take the time to watch all the hot videos because we love seeing all your comments and thumbs up. If you aren't already a subscriber, I hope you consider subscribing and click that little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can also use the hashtag uh, KCC7GiveawayHop to find all of the videos in this hop. Also, please make sure you check out the description box below for all the details on how to enter. I'm using lots of items today from Pink and Main and Sweet November stamps because they are a few of the sponsors for some of the prizes on the Hop giveaway as well as for the Car Challenge 7 giveaway. So I hope that you love the card that we end up making today. I think it's super fun and different and I will have all of the items I'm using today listed in that description box below for you. I am showing you each thing here uh, in the video. And then this is what our card sketch looks like that we will be building today. So let's go ahead and jump into that project. So I'm starting out by prepping my little square that's going to go on an angle in the center of my card. So this, when it's finished, is gonna be a two and a half uh, inch square but to start I cut it out at three inches square so that I would have room to trim any kind of like excess off of the edges I don't know about you but when I Copic color my edges always end up a little rough uh, from where the marker hits the edge of the paper so I like to give myself room to trim and I am using the Sweet November Stamps Mermies or Merwees sorry set one and two as well as this little seahorse from the Mermie set at one and then the horizontal lines um, ocean scene builder so uh, I went back in and added some bubbles and gave her a little fish and a seahorse friend just to help fill out the whole scene and now is when I'm going to get my actual card panel ready to match my sketch so I'm using a a2 standard size five and a half by four and a quarter in that teal color and now I'm going in with my uh, bigger of my two rectangles, which um, hold on, let me pull it up. is four inches by three and a quarter. And that's out of craft. And then my navy blue stripe from Pink and Main pattern paper is three and three quarters by three. And of course, all of these sketches, all of the links for downloading those PDFs and everything are going to be in that description box below for you. My little green line down at the bottom of my card is a quarter inch by five and a half. And then I am prepping my sentiment now just so it had time to dry. So I use that new Uncharted Mariner um, oxide ink to stamp out my sentiment on craft. And then I just set it to the side so we can figure out the finished size when everything is done. Then it was time to jump into my Copic coloring for this piece. I had so much fun coloring in this Sweet Little Mermaid and I tried to keep everything pretty consistent with my colors using the teal, navy blue, and that really fun limey green as my color bases for everything, kind of keeping that same color story across my scene that I'm creating now. So I decided to go in with my water first. My water is usually my trickiest part and you'll see I end up going back and forth over these lines where my colors meet a few times just to try to smooth out the blend a little bit. I've also found that using kind of those scrubby sketchy motions works a little bit better for me for underwater type of scenes because uh, if I make just straight lines, I feel like I can see the lines and even if I can see the scrubby motions, it kind of makes more sense for an underwater scene than straight lines. So I am also doing some tip to tip coloring using my BG 11 to pick up some of that BG 13 and just kind of overlap and help smooth everything out. So I finished it off my gradient by adding in some BG 10 up at the top. Um, and the thing to remember is a lot of the side scene stuff that I'm going to be coloring in is getting trimmed out. 
So I left it all in, the coloring in for everything, but our finished scene, we're not gonna be able to see like all of those rocks on either side and a lot of the floor is gonna be cut out and all of that, but it doesn't matter. I wanted to keep it in so that no matter what size you're creating or scene you're creating or which sketch you might wanna use some of these techniques for, um, you would have it available to you. But the card challenge is super fun because uh, you're being challenged to create all of the card sketches over a quarter of a year, which I think is so fun. Anytime you need an extra little boost of creativity, you could just pull out some sketches and start with that. So I colored in my little fish in a very bright yellow. That is the one extra color that I added to my scene that's not on my card, but it kind of goes with that um, analogous color scheme of the yellow, green, and blue. I made sure my little mermaid tail matched the navy dot background as best as I could. And I used the same kind of turquoisey colors as the water and the background for her little shell bra. Um, and then my cute little seahorse, he's that limey green to match with my green striped pattern paper. And I wanted to keep everything else just really neutral. So I just used some very neutral browns for my sand and kind of the side walls of these fun background wall elements. And then some warm grays for those stones. I use the same YG markers for my seahorse as I did for these kind of plants and just added in one extra darker green for this kind of bigger piece of kelpie, coral, whatever it is. And then I'm gonna use the same yellows that I used on my fish for that bigger coral piece there, the two sections. And in the end, again, only a little bit of that pokes through, but I just think it's nice to have a couple touches of that yellow within the scene because I don't have it on my background. And then I saved her hair for last because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with a natural color or a fun fashion color. Um, but today I decided to stick with some dark naturals and went with my E40 markers, the same as the sand and the rocks, just the darker shades that I hadn't pulled out yet. And I think that's a really nice way to keep the color story kind of cohesive without using the exact same color combinations for every single section. I went in with my white gel marker to add in some fun highlights, and then I'm going to trim down my little scene so it is two and a half by two and a half. To trim out my scene, I just cut um, like a, a quarter inch, I guess, from each side so that it way uh, my square would stay even as far as keeping my mermaid right in the middle. And then it was time to trim out my sentiment. So I just kind of eyeballed what looked good as far as giving it space. And then I'm using the plastic part of my little guard there lining it up with the edge of the font, and that way I know that there's equal distance on either side of my words. So I decided to be a little extra, and when I was cutting in the little fishtails for my sentiment, I wanted to make sure it was pretty centered and it was the same on both sides. So I'm just using a little T ruler here to make sure that my um, the dots that I'm creating are kind of equal from equidistant from either side and I'm just going to use my scissors to snip to that point and then trim from the corner to the center and the corner to the center. I find this is the easiest way to kind of make these fishtail ribbon cuts. Um, you do whatever works for you if you have a die or something but I just felt like this was the easiest and when I went over my edges with my eraser to make sure my pencil was gone it kind of helped to just kind of flatten out the edges of my cuts and it was good to go. So I'm going to adhere my scene into place and then add my sentiment over top of that little green accent. Um, but I want to invite you to join in on this challenge. It's open to card makers worldwide and there are so many amazing prizes to be won throughout the quarter with some amazing companies. So links to where you can download the free PDF and other important information will all be found in that description box below. I hope you are feeling super inspired and I am so grateful that you came to hang out with me today. Have fun on the rest of your hop and as always, happy crafting.